This episode of Wise Advice is sponsored by Health IQ, an insurance company that helps health conscious people like runners, cyclists, weightlifters, and vegetarians get lower rates on their life insurance. Go to healthiq.com forward slash DAG to support the show and see if you qualify. Fat Dag is a Weight Watchers leader in Indianapolis, Indiana. However, the views and opinions expressed during this podcast are his own. They do not represent the views of Weight Watchers. And now, here's your host and wingman, Fat Dag. I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, your celebrations. I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. That's right. I believe in you still. Welcome to episode 100. 67 of Wise Advice. Thank you all for being here. Every once in a while, I get some email back. If you go to fatdag.com, at the very bottom of the main page, you'll see a subscribe to my newsletter. And I got to tell you, really, the only purpose for that is that we know that this journey takes focus. We know that every single day you need something to remind you that you're doing it. And so I set up a newsletter. It's not a daily newsletter. I send it out about about every, I don't know, 10 to 12 days or so. Once a month, I push out everything that comes in from the blog just to kind of get you back into the fatdag.com blog if you miss some posts out there. But really, it's just a reminder for you to keep yourself focused. I told you early on that part of my success was my wingman wrote in to me every single morning to get me going. And, you know, and while I'd love to do a a daily email out to you, I just don't think that's feasible. So, so we compromise and, and I remind you along the journey, give you a podcast somewhat daily post somewhere. So you really got to kind of just kind of plug into the whole fat dag experience to get it from all different sources to keep you motivated. And in the meantime, you certainly motivate yourself. But go to fatdag.com, click on subscribe to the newsletter at the very bottom of the main page, and you will be launched into that community as well. Thank you out for being here. Continue to do what you're doing. We're doing amazing work. It's just absolutely critical that we're out here getting it done. And it just really really warms my heart to see the amazing success that we have. Success just like what Michelle writes in right now. And she says, uh, hello, Fat Dag. Thank you for your podcast. I've been binge listening over the winter break, and I even caught your live broadcast last night. I started listening, admittedly because of your military service. As a mom of a young Marine stationed overseas, the holidays can be a bit emotional. I gravitate to any sort of military connection, no matter how tenuous, to help me feel closer to my son. I kept listening because uh, so much of what you have to say resonates with me on so many levels. You are an extra shot of focus with my coffee. My first serious journey with Weight Watchers began February 2012. I had tried to lose weight before, but this time it was different. I was laser focused. I didn't have a timeline for weight loss. I knew just how I would follow the program to goal, and I did. In 10 10 months, I lost 93 pounds, and I hit the top of my healthy weight range. That felt good. I then fell into what I now know but didn't recognize at the time was a bit of complacency. It was the holidays, then my birthday. I looked good. I felt great. I lost a bit of focus. I teetered around that weight, but not officially on maintenance, but not losing much either. After six weeks, my leader had asked me if I wanted to just take that number and make it my goal weight. Use the six weeks as maintenance and get lifetime that day. I decided yes. So I got that gold key, 
but I haven't really earned it. And I know now after listening to you, Fat Dag, that I never truly hit goal. I didn't ever have that I'm done losing weight feeling. I did manage over the next month to lose seven more pounds, mostly because I really wanted that 100-pound charm. I remember standing in front of my meeting to receive it and feeling like a total fraud. I knew I hadn't truly earned that charm. The number on the scale wasn't real. I knew I had run two miles before weigh-in, and I hadn't eaten anything in about 24 hours. I was already playing games with the scale, something I didn't want to be doing. I managed to hold on to my lifetime status for almost a year, but it was always a struggle. The holidays rolled around again, and my weight started to climb. Not a lot, just a few pounds at a time. I began to drift away from Weight Watchers. The years passed, and I was now up to the top of my overweight range, right on the edge of obese. I decided I was ready to come back to Weight Watchers. Uh, there, this was just well, as the program was switching from Points Plus to Smart Points. This was a major shift. Points Plus had been so successful for me. It was pretty much straightforward calorie counting program, roughly 40 calories, e- calories equal one point. I knew that program. I could do that pro- program. Why would Weight Watchers change something that had been so successful? Smart Points was not straightforward at all. Two items with the same calories could vastly different differ in point counts. While its emphasis on lean protein and the increase in points to items with sugar, smart points felt restrictive and punitive to me. Obviously, that was about my own mental state, though. I threw a hissy fit. I quit Weight Watchers, and I declared I would just do it myself. So I did, sort of. I used a free calorie counting app, and I mostly maintained where I was. My weekends often undoing my hard work during the week. Then life shifted again, and as it does, seemingly overnight, I was living in an empty nest. The downside of having three kids in two and a half years is that they all left at the same time. Two to college, one to the Marine Corps. My husband travels a lot for work, so I truly had an empty house for most of the week. I fell straight into the wine bottle. What was a weekend thing now became a daily dive into the numbing effect of alcohol. The alcohol then led to late night binges on sugar and carbs. My weight crept back up to almost my highest weight again. On Friday, November 3rd, 2017, I had had enough. I woke up that, that I woke up that morning and I knew I needed to sign up for Weight Watchers. I was tired of feeling out of control, tired of waking up with humiliation and regret. I needed a plan. I opened my phone, downloaded the app, and I signed up. It was not a good time to start. My husband and I were getting ready to go visit our youngest son at college. Is there a worse time to start a diet and stop drinking than as you leave on a five-hour road trip to a college town for a football weekend? I did it, though. Once again, I have my laser focus back, with one major difference. I have a plan for maintenance and lifetime this time. It's why when I first heard you talk about attendance goals, I just smiled. You see, as I was downloading the Weight Watchers app this time, I mentally committed to weighing in and attending meetings every week for a full year after reaching lifetime. Now you can imagine the anxiety that hit me when just a week after starting back to Weight Watchers, the rumblings of a new program began to hit Connect. The rumors about freestyle had me a bit panicked. I really, really like structure. And more zero-point foods and less tracking had me freaking out a bit. What I did know, though, was that no matter what the program changes were, I was going to stick with Weight Watchers. I was not going to let myself get derailed by a program change again. For me, the switch to freestyle has been easy. It's basically how I was eating before, but I I got to add in more protein that I like, and I feel that it's even easier to work in special occasion foods or occasional splurges. I I know that it's just not true for everyone. I see the posts on Connect for people struggling with the change, and I wish I could help. I do remember how awful that felt and how I let it drive me away from Weight Watchers. All I know to say to them is, don't quit. 
I know that doesn't work. Thanks again, Fat Dag, for all that you do for the Weight Watchers community and especially all that you do to help and encourage your fellow service members with their weight struggles. Operation Fat Dag is an amazing outreach program. Uh, Michelle, week eight, down 31 and a half pounds, sorry, uh, 56 days sober. Michelle, congratulations. Way to take control of your life. A shout out to your son for serving in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, a special salute to him. You know, one percent of this nation steps up and raises and, and volunteers their time and effort to to defend the nation. So I, uh, I have a special place in my heart, of course, for him and his family, and you know anyone who now we will serve through Operation Fat Dag as well. But you have a lot going on in your email, and it, it's really, really interesting as I read through it. Because I understand much of it, you know, that every time the program changes, those of us who are doing so well on it, you know, we're not interested in that change. We found a routine that worked. We found a way to get into that laser focus, and and that's working well for us. And then all of a sudden, something comes along, whether it be for our own good or not, it comes along and it derails us because we don't want to work the program through a change. I get that. You know, some people have tried very hard to change and it's not working for them. I get that. I love what you said at the end, though, is that that this is a program that we know and trust, and that is what we have to rely on. Now, I can tell you, as I work my own way through the struggle of of freestyle as well, uh, I, I have given it my complete support. And how you know that is because this is what I vowed to do is to continue to work with you to help us figure the plan out together to get whatever goals that we want. Now, I certainly don't have all the answers. I certainly don't know all the data behind it. I don't know all the scientific rules that were used to develop the program. That's not my lane. My lane is exactly what you said. My lane is to tell you that the program works, to trust the people who developed it, and to say, we together can figure this out. But by quitting, it's never going to work for us. You lost 93 pounds in 10 months on Point Plus. You can do that again with this program. It's the same concept. The concept is the same as that you have to be accountable to what you're doing. The way you're accountable now is slightly different. But you've proven that you're a rock star. And with a lot of focus, you can get it done. I understand wanting the 100 pound charm. I was 91 pounds when I hit goal and you know and I and I made a decision to I want that 100 pound charm or not. But I truly was at a place where I said I don't want to lose any more weight. That's goal. You know, and for you now, you know what that's like. That was very similar for you. Now, granted, you were playing games with the scale by running two, you know, two miles before your weigh-in, not eating for a day, but you maintained that for an entire year, so you absolutely earned it. Yeah, you earned it. You, you were able to get it done. You were able to, to maintain this for an entire year, which now continues to prove to me that you absolutely can do this. You know, they're right. You're right. There's so many different apps out there as to as to how to do it. And, you know, the calorie counting apps that you used before, you know, one of the things that I think is key to this program that differs from a lot of those apps is that this program continues to evolve to take into account all of the changes that happen in the food world and the food industry to keep us up to speed. Not all food is created equal. A 100 calorie apple is not at all the same as a 100 calorie cookie. It's just not. And if you're using a simple calorie counting app and you're just strictly going back to counting calories, you know, and you have 100 calories left for the day, there's a good chance you're going to eat, you know, the just sugary cookie. That's what most of us have done. So as this program recognizes that, gives you the option to have fruit and vegetables for free, get or zero points, gives you the option to have, you know, um, proteins and for zero points because we want to encourage you to start building a foundation of healthier living. You had a plan. You had a plan and you got to goal. You know, when you made it, you started sticking to your plan. I can tell by your email that you need the accountability 
I think that's true for a lot of us. And it comes in a, a bunch of different forms, but you need that accountability. And what I really love about this is that you've continued to learn from your journey. This time, when you get back to your goal weight, you've set yourself to commit to the program for an additional year. That's incredible insight because you've recognized what your strengths are. Your strengths are you're able to follow the plan. You've recognized what your weaknesses are. Your weaknesses are is once you finish the plan, you fall into complacency mode and you're able to drift back. But now as you recognize that, when you get back to your goal weight, that's when your new plan kicks in and you start setting new goals of attendance for that next year. During that year, you're going to notice so many things about your journey. You're going, I want you to really tap into the non-scale victories that are out there. I want you to work on new goals so that every day you're working towards something that makes you better. That is how we win. How we win is by accepting the fact that for the rest of our lives, we have to make changes. We have to make our plan has to adjust. Our lifestyle has to adjust. Our goals have to adjust. Everything we do on this journey is about adjusting. Those who are able to make the adjustments with a healthy mindset can move forward and reach whatever goals they set. Michelle, thank you for your validation of your email. Truly is an honor to walk this journey with you. Week eight into it, 31 and a half pounds down. You're doing fantastic, and I'm glad to see you know, 56 days sober too. That's an incredible accomplishment as well. Michelle, thank you so much for writing in. Health IQ uses science and data to secure lower rates on life insurance for health-conscious people like runners, cyclists, strength trainers, vegans, and more. Health IQ is the fastest growing life insurance company with over $5 billion in coverage. Like saving money on your car insurance for being a good driver, Health IQ saves you money on your life insurance for living a health conscious lifestyle. 56% of Health IQ customers save between 4 and 33% on their life insurance. Health IQ reduces your chance of being penalized for adverse family health history if you're otherwise healthy. Most carriers will penalize people if their heart rate is too low. Health IQ actually helps them recognize that this is a sign of your excellent health and fitness. Health IQ has convinced carriers to provide special rates to those who have chosen a plant-based diet. A low-carb diet reduces your cardiovascular risk despite increasing your total cholesterol. Health IQ carriers are a little more lenient. I checked it out myself. The quote came in at a lower rate than my current policy. I've gone through the process of getting screened. I have my blood drawn. I talked to Ryan at Health IQ, and he was able to answer all of my questions. To see if you qualify, get your free quote today at healthiq.com forward slash DAG. From Facebook, Nikki writes in and says, I have another question about freestyle. Where, um, Where I don't eat red meats or pork or junk food, I'm having trouble getting enough points. I know people roll their eyes at this, but the struggle is real. Most of the foods I ate on Weight Watchers are now considered free. After two weeks of no losses but following the plan, my my leader and I went through my food plan. Some days I only had less than 800 calories. I stopped eating my regular meals because I needed points. She gave me the okay to track my fish, chicken, etc. as the old point values. And bam, I started losing again. We all need to work the plan the best way for our bodies and our lifestyle. Nikki, uh, you know, I agree with you. And so what I'm glad to see is that you tapped into your leader to get some advice, looked over your food plan, and made a customized plan specifically for you. I like that. I, I like that you're taking control of your journey. Rather than just trying to figure it out alone, you've tapped in the advice of, of someone who's willing to help you and help you you really stay focused on getting it done. I can tell by your question that this is something you want. I can tell by your question that you're clearly able to do it. You know, consider looking at the simply filling version of the plan that that may work out better for you. I don't know. But what I can tell is that the fact that you're working with your leader directly, that is your success. Now, generally speaking, I don't encourage folks, you know, if you come up on the end of the day and and you've gotten enough food for the day, I don't usually encourage you to eat just for the sake of eating. 
But at the same point, 800 calories a day certainly is not sustainable. So adjust to what your leader said. Continue to monitor that. If it helps tap into your doc and a nutritionist, they could provide some additional insight. But you absolutely can do this. Continue to stay in the plan. Everything, you know, just a slight variation. We don't consider it free. We just consider it zero points. But, you know, after your two weeks of no loss by following the plan, you know, it's good to see that as you start tracking back, you know, the, the food values there, you know, bam, everything started working in place for you. So continue to do that. Continue to follow the plan. You'll continue to have amazing success uh, and check in, obviously, with your leader often. Jeanette says, how do you get started with exercise to encourage someone who is just getting started? Jeanette, I'm really, really big on this. There's a couple of posts on Connect. Uh, there's a couple episodes I've done this. Even my Facebook page, sorry, my, my website, fatdag.com, addresses what I call the 5 a.m. club, which really is do something somewhere, somehow, anywhere, any day. It doesn't matter. Just every single day, deliberately do something related to exercise. So what I want you to do is I want you to set attendance goals, not performance goals. I've talked about that many, many, many times. And, and, and the overview of that concept is, is, is if you are going to go to the gym and you're going to work out so hard that you need a, you know, two or three weeks off to recover, that's not the same as doing something every single day for two weeks. So take that same two, three-week time span. If you get up and walk every single day for just a short period of time and you did it every single day, you're building a healthy routine of going. Now, sure, you're, you, know, you may feel like when you come back from the walk that you didn't do anything, but, but just absolutely not true. What you did is you reserved time in your calendar and you deliberately did something. The next day that time in your calendar comes along and you do that activity again, you're now building that time slot in your calendar as the time you focus on you. If you do that seven days a week you know, for, for an entire month, you now have fully committed yourself to that time slot or a time slot a day as working out. Take just the opposite is if all of a sudden now you try, you know, you squeeze in time to go to the gym, you go one day this week, but then you need four days off and then you go five days after that. And that same month goes by, but you were only able to go five or six times. Your calendar doesn't know what you're working on. I want you to set an attendance goal so that you build this time in your calendar and that will give you long-term success because as you continue to work on your attendance goals, slowly but surely, the performance side of your goals will kick in. Next up, it says, Debbie out of Northern Virginia says, Dear Mike, I know what you say that we shouldn't wait until we hit a milestone to write, yet today as I hit a milestone that I've been working towards for months, I am proud to say that the scale is finally catching up with my mindset. Today at my awesome Sunday morning meeting, I finally hit... 10%. I could hear you in my head saying, if you reach 10%, you can reach goal. Yeah, I know I can reach goal. I'm a lifetime member above goal. My first journey with Weight Watchers was 2003, six months after my son was born. I wanted to be able to fully participate in his life and run with him on the playground. I reached lifetime in late 2003, losing 27 pounds. I was so happy and maintained my lifetime status until getting pregnant with my daughter in late 2005. My second journey began in 2006 as I worked back towards lifetime at goal post-pregnancy. Well, life happened, and in 2013, I rejoined for the third journey. After surviving a divorce, meeting a wonderful new man, moving to Virginia, and starting a new life, I was at my highest weight yet. My new man joined Weight Watchers with me, and I made it back to Lifetime in May of 2014, right before our wedding in June of 14. I was so excited and motivated. I even began working as a Weight Watcher receptionist. I loved helping members and paying it forward. But life happened again. Last year, I ended up in a horrible work situation, which almost broke me. I'm a teacher. It is all I've ever wanted to do, but last year it made me doubt 
everything. What a surprise. The weight came back on. I ended up deciding I could not dedicate time to working for Weight Watchers anymore. On April 28, 2017, I joined Weight Watchers again as a member for my fourth journey. From April until July, I attended meetings in survival mode. I lost some weight but was still struggling and doing just the best that I could. In July, that all changed, and I got a new teaching job in an amazing school where I love working. I also started listening to you. I joined a mom's run, this town group, and began the Couch to 5K. I began focusing on attendance goals and my why. I kept up with my attendance goals, and in November, I ran my first 10K. In December, I got sick and got complacent in my weight loss efforts, but 2018 changed all of that. In late December, I heard one of your podcasts where you discussed not exercising outside as a lack of preparation. I committed to my attendance goals, and I started 13.1 Trainer on January 1st, 2018. Since then, I have logged 63 miles in the last 20 days. I have also gotten all blue dots in January. I am proud to say these new habits have helped me finally shed 17.4 pounds or 10% of my initial starting weight. My why? I grew up in a negative family where toxic energy was the norm, where both my parents ate to self-soothe and I grew up learning the same. I do not want that life, nor will I live that life ever. My life, I want to be able to wake up every morning feeling fabulous, being active and fit, shop in my closet, and most of all, have gratitude and appreciation for all the gifts in my life. My husband, my children, my job, my friends, it's a total mindset shift, and I love it. On April 29th, 2018, I will run in the National Women's Half Marathon, my first half, and I am so excited. As a teacher, a friend, a mom, and a wife, I am modeling that if you set small goals, you can reach tremendous heights. With the support of you, the Wise Wingmen, my MRTT group, and my amazing Sunday Weight Watcher Warrior team, I can and I will do this. Mentally, I'm a lifetimer at goal, and I know before I know it, the scale will catch up. Thanks for all you do for Weight Watchers and Operation Fat Dag. I wish you... And everyone listening, good focus. Debbie from Northern Virginia. Debbie, I think your journey sums up the journey for so many of us. You know, we we can all do this. There isn't a question of whether or not this can be done. The question is, is when life throws us a curveball, are we strong enough to come back to it to continue to have the dreams that we want? You have proven that. Congratulations on reaching your 10%. You're right. If you've hit 10%, you can hit goal. You've proven you have the tools. You've proven you have the accountability. You've proven you found some support. You know enough about your why that can push you through some bad days. And you can still go forward and getting it done. Now, I've told you on more than one occasion that, you know, my journey is not very different than yours. And so, you know, some of the details along the way may be slightly different, but, but every time I joined, I joined at a higher starting weight. I would join, I would have success, I would, something would derail me or something would cause me to quit or I'd quit because I felt like I was doing well, but I would stop going and then later on I would rejoin at a little bit higher weight. I would get through the process, I would, you know, end up quitting And so when this time, just like you, I finally said, I'm done. I'm going to have the life that I deserve. I'm going to have the life that I want. I'm going to get it done. I love your why. You know, growing up in a negative family where toxic energy is the norm, certainly, you know, I'm glad to see that you've recognized that. I'm glad to see that you want something completely different for your life and for your family. And the only way to get something different is to recognize what it is that you don't want. Wake up every day finding out what it is that you do want and going after it to get it done. 
waking up every single morning feeling fabulous, being active, being fit, shopping in your closet, having gratitude and appreciation of all the gifts in your life, that is a mindset that you have to develop. You're clearly developing it. You clearly understand that that is the priority in your life. If you wake up every day with that kind of celebration, you can be unstoppable. I can't wait to hear the results of your half marathon. It's going to be exciting as well as you as you embark on a new challenge, as you embark on a new goal, something that that for a long time you may not have ever even thought was possible, but you've progressed through your journey far enough where that is a reality. Thanks for plugging the Wise Wingman Group. Thanks for staying plugged into the podcast. Your Sunday Weight Watcher Warrior team clearly is amazing. Mentally, you are a lifetimer at goal. You know it. I know it. Everyone listening to this podcast knows it. The scale is always the last to know. But it will, and I do know it will catch up if you keep going the direction that you're going. Debbie, congratulations on an amazing mindset an amazing attitude. It's truly an honor to celebrate with you. Folks, what is it that you're celebrating? Let's share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com, click on Wise Advice Podcast, send in your celebrations, your comments, your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. I want you to email in your celebrations because I want you to be proud of what you're doing. So many people often always say too that when they finally sit down and write it in, it brings some clarity to what they're doing. It holds them accountable. It puts it out there as something that they want to reach for. I want you to be able to do that. I want you to hold yourself accountable. I want you to make the declaration, set your goals, put them in writing, share them with us. Let us hold you accountable. Let's prove to you you can get it done. Let's prove to the community that it's doable. Well, that's going to do it for this time. Remember, losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. Thank you for listening to the Wise Advice Podcast. Did you know for as little as $1 a month, you can take the next step as a wingman and support the show? Visit fatdag.com, click on Become a Patron today.